lightning flashes illuminating the backyard at midnight and you think you see a body shadow. The doorbell rings so you answer it and there is nobody there. What frightens you? Spiders? Different people were spooked silly by different things. I put a rattlesnake in your sleeping bag an hour ago. Now we're going to see what scares you because I've been waiting my entire life to write a book that would keep readers up at night, disrupt their sleep patterns, and make goose flesh rise just from reading a sentence. Keeping my little nightmarish stories on the PG rated side, I don't want to go overboard with obscene or graphic nature, but the result is hopefully going to make you jittery the next day, thinking things over, if you will. Reading ghost stories to two boys when I was a newspaper journalist, I would ask him what I'm asking you now. Do you want it not so scary or real scary? Real scary, the two boys would scream just before bedtime. Then, from a zero gravity threshold, the story would take place from scratch, with no script, no backstory, and absolutely nary a prior thought just off-the-cuff storytelling with a riveting ending. It was evident that my tale was getting a grip on their tender psyches because the covers would tend to creep up on their necks, covering their noses as their eyes peeked at me. I never mentioned the swimming pool of blood. They were too young for turning blind at midnight or lungs full of asbestos or straddling an electric fence. Once I tried to slip in a uh, fish hook through my eyeball, but I was scolded for going too far. But I always knew that my storytelling ability was growing stronger when they would beg for, um, after their longer than usual prayers, could you turn on the nightlife and leave the door open a little? There are a lot of things that frighten me. As a journalist, I've seen bodies covered with blood. My articles have made people angry and caused them to threaten me. It's not paranoia. There's always been someone after me. Someone calls you on the phone and saying nothing, only brooding. Would you spend the night in the graveyard? The main thing that makes me bugged out of my mind is being on the first floor looking at a window's curtains and seeing a silhouette outside lurk, lurking. I have a recurring nightmare about that, and the door opens as a specter enters, laughing that loud, cavernous echo of a devilish chorter. Blood scared me early on, too. Snakes scare me. Quicksand scares me. Frightens me. The only thought of being uh, the thought of being secretly poisoned sends me up the wall. I never saw a ghost until my Aunt Bernice of Newton died. I saw her at the foot of my bed and she was smiling. She didn't say anything, but I had felt her presence ever since the funeral, so I told my cousin Jeff about it, and he said that he had the same feeling. Maybe we want to see people who have passed on so badly that we conjure up spirits I'm not sure, but whether it was a dream or not, one of my later stories cemented in my mind that there are ghosts and haunted houses.